Hello. Hey. We're back. Um. On this beautifully cold Friday where we're at. It's fucking it's freezing. Fucking freazing, yeah. It's like, what, it's supposed to be like three degrees or something? Yeah, negative know. three maybe is a low. That's... It's, it's wicked, not good. Wicked weather, if I've ever heard of the it. The Midwest is brutal. That's Grant. It's true. And I'm Jake, and Mitch is here. Uh, we are starting a cult. I think at this point, it's fair to say we have. We got one. Started it. We got one, but we're just going to keep the name for for business reasons. Yeah, All pretty right? much. Yeah. Dude, I think we got a lot of new uh, new listeners. We've been blowing up on the socials lately, so thank you all for joining us. But yeah, I, I'd like to take a minute, and uh, I, there is a, a single individual out there. Uh, I, it's a new, the new patron, you know. So we got a new patron there. man. Yeah, a little, uh, little shout out. It, it made my day. I just want to, I want to explain how this occurred. So uh, Gabriel, I, I'm, I'm just going based off of the name that I've been told via email and via Patreon. Yeah, you know, you never know. If Perhaps you the pronunciation people. is incorrect, and if that's the case, Gabriel? it will be rectified because uh, this individual uh, has reached out to the We Are Starting a Cult base, which uh, it is just Jake and I. Yeah, it is. It's uh, and it's us, too, against the world. It's true, and I, I feel extremely honored... Uh, this individual would like to contribute to the show by becoming a researcher for the show for us. Which is badass. And it's the first time it's ever happened. And, I mean, yeah, we immediately said yes. It's very very sweet of him. That's awesome. So Very helpful and sweet. When you listen to this, buddy, I need you to know that we appreciate you. And it's true. Thank you very much. You're 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 wonderful. We have some great fans. I got to admit. Over in that state that's yours, that isn't ours. Mm-hmm. So thank you. We do. We got some. We got the best fans in the world. Take that, Oprah. It's true. You fucking Jesus Christ, Oprah. Suck my Get fat out of here. rod, you Oprah. You don't need to be here anymore. Oh, but you know. But anyway, it's been. It's been a minute, so I'm. Gonna, we're just gonna dump dump the truth on you people, and we're gonna tell you. <laughs> what is what is this? It's been a minute since we've had one of those like more laid back, fun episodes, and we we got this topic that is super intriguing, and I think it's just gonna spawn very intriguing a and, large conversation about other things. Oh yeah, so very spooktastic at the end there. Be ready to just. I want you to put your proverbial seatbelts on, and I want you to trim your just, proverbial nose hairs. Okay, I just I'd, yank them out. I'd like you to get a tattoo gun and stab it into your leg until it resembles our logo. And after you've done these things, uh, tell everyone you know, go into your local church and scream at the top of your lungs uh, during the sermon portion. And just scream. Praise uh, Papa G. Praise Papa Jake. We are starting a cult. Do that. That's fine. That's yeah. a, that's a good chant. But once you get all that done, so it, I'm gonna here. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> I want you to take a deep breath. You're going too fast for yourself. Take a deep breath, everyone. Pause this episode. <sighs> Go do everything I just said, and then unpause this episode. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. You're back. Thanks for doing that. Um. We really, I yeah, hope, we really appreciated that what you just did. I know it might be unfair that I'm telling you this now, but we are in no way responsible for any fiscal situations you've got. Yeah, yourself yeah, into yeah, yeah. Because of that scenario, but I will tell you, we this. don't know you. You're just taking our advice. We will gladly, but we want to know you. We'll gladly talk about you. That's that's it, reach that's out. Perfect. But today we are going to talk about some bang bang pow pow. If you know what I'm well, saying, some of that, some of that little little mm, little <laughs> little zap. A little bit of, hey there, pal, bang, bang. Little I don't think so. Womp, wow. yeah. And a really old, rich cunt that had, arguably had too much money. A little bit. Uh, yeah, we're, we're talking about none other than Sarah Winchester. Sarah Winchester. Yeah. yeah. She talks to the wind just like King Crimson does. <laughs> Pretty much. I got a lot of fucking shit out of her. You want me to just go in? I'm ready, dude. Diarrhea this shit out. Let's All right. get this, let's so get this train. So basically, Sarah had this house that she built her entire life, right? 
It's called the Winchester Mystery House. That's what it's known as now. The Winchester Mystery House is a Queen Anne-style Victorian mansion in San Jose, California, whose construction spanned over roughly 36 years. All right? Entirely led by Sarah. Sarah Winchester. She was the widow of the firearm magnate William Wirt Winchester. And following his death in 1881, uh, due to tuberculosis, he died of tuberculosis. He's gone. That sucks. From tuberculosis. So this Just guy... Like Arthur Morgan. Sorry, but... <laughs> you never played that game. But Red Dead Redemption It's 2, been out for long enough. Your character dies of tuberculosis. Just like Winchester. Oh! oh. I've been so, waiting to get that one off my chest dude, for years. this guy was loaded in more than one way. A little firearm uh, joke. So, uh, Sarah inherited from him twenty and a half million dollars. In 1881, which to today I did like. Well, well, don't say. I it went yet. into the conversion. Don't say it thing yet. and said an exact amount of money. What do you what? Don't say it yet. Mitch is here. I want Mitch take a guess. In in today's money, how much do you think that that is valued at? Twenty and a now? half million dollars. How much do you think that is now? I, I want an out because I know it. So does Jake. So I want an outsider. It's sitting right in front of me. Twenty and a half. I'm gonna say. Let's say three hundred million somewhere around 300 million god you are stupid no kidding (laughs) it's obviously 538 million eight hundred and twenty one thousand eighty nine dollars and 81 cents that's exactly how much it is today so she inherited that right off the bat but she also got nearly 50 percent ownership of the winchester repeating arms company uh which gave her an income of a thousand dollars a day. How much do you think that is a day in today's money, Mitch? One thousand dollars a day in eighteen eighty one. Too fucking much. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> no, but I'm not okay with that. Uh let's think here. Uh like a million. Let's see. A million. <laughs> fair guess, but it is a fair guess, but no, it was uh twenty six thousand uh, dollars plus two hundred and eighty three dollars and ninety six cents a day. So she was making fucking a, a non-souped-up Tesla amount of money every day. So she's <laughs> fucking know. set. She's fucking set. So a little about Sarah Winchester as a person, right? She was born around 1840 into a life of privilege. Uh, she was extremely well-educated, apparently going to the best schools available at the time, and she spoke four fucking languages by the time she was in her mid-20s. Isn't that crazy? Uh, so then she then married well, which is an understatement to say the least, based on those fucking numbers we just went over. And, uh, yeah, so she married well, she was going to have a beautiful baby girl named Annie, and she did. Annie came into existence. Sadly, uh, in the midst of her late 20s, Annie had become sick with an illness known as marasmus, I think. ass leakage. It's not what it is. That's uh, <laughs> no, no, not no, what it is. it is at all. That's the layman's term, I believe. <laughs> Ass leakage. Yeah. It doesn't even. <laughs> that's what. No, the, that's it, like you know. When it's you a go... disease where. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's been. We got to start over. We got to. Oh uh, God! Can't. Cut it! Cut it! We got to get out of here. No, Somebody but, uh, open the window. I can't breathe. <laughs> so, so all right. So Sarah. Sarah and William had a baby named Annie. Annie got marasmus, which is a disease. <laughs> she got that more usually ass appears. Miss. Oh God, it's a disease that usually appears before the age of one, wherein the individual is severely malnourished due to the inability to process any intake of energy or protein from food. God, that is not as funny. So that it's, it's not as funny one. as ass leakage at all. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> It's a really uh, Annie, skinny baby. Yeah, Annie succumbed to this disease. That you, sucks. You know, you know. So, Rest uh, in peace, Annie. I'm sorry. Yeah, not long after this is when her husband died uh, from tuberculosis, as we covered before. God, talk about an unfortunate time it's period. It's not a good mid-20s situation. <laughs> it's like, fuck, everything sucks. <laughs> so she was left with no family and an utterly disgusting amount of money. All right? So what does she do? She goes to a Bostonian medium for some fucking advice uh, to possibly get some advice on how to spend the remainder of her life as well as the riches she uh, was left with, right? So, all of what was said during this session is not entirely documented. There weren't any, like, cameras or anything, or, like, scribes. None of that. So, we don't know exactly what went down. 
Um, the only thing we know is that the story goes, the medium channeled Sarah's dead husband, William, who told her uh, to leave her home in New Haven, Connecticut, and head out to California. As for what to do with the money, uh, William's spirit suggested that uh, she use it to build a home for all the spirits of those who had fallen victim to his namesake's rifles. Which is kind of fun, right? It's like a house specifically built to be haunted. I feel like you're just asking for it, you know? Yeah. He suggested this to prevent them from haunting her the rest of her life. So apparently, so she just did that. That's what she did. Uh, three years later in 1884, that's when she did it, right? After the tragedy struck. She purchased a large property on Santa Clara Valley. I think it was like 160 acres or some shit at the time. So, and in today's acres, that's actually... <laughs> she purchased... It's the Louisiana <laughs> Purchase. But, uh, so she went to Santa Clara Valley uh, with an unfinished farmhouse amidst it. Right? Okay. Construction began immediately. Uh, with multiple ca- carpenters working day and night until a seven-story mansion stood where the farmhouse once did. Seven stories? Seven stories that, in California. That's like a fucking... I don't even... Under, that's like a museum. It is. But, okay, I I mean, I can't tell you any building I've ever been to that has seven stories that isn't... Uh, like a place of business? Some type of office or business something. or a skyscraper. It's... the. I mean, the max is maybe four that I've seen, just like local, you know, like pop ins where it's like, oh, this is like a four, it's got four floors. But like, just a house with seven. What do you, can oh, you you're going to be. The electric bill and like, wh- where do you put the washer and dryer? Oh, you it's. Know? You'll see, you'll actually be very pleased with this next part, right? Okay. So, so Sarah had no. Seven washers. She had and no dryers. architect. She didn't have an architect. So it was entirely guided by her every step of the way. Uh, with extremely unusual and particular uh, directions. Peculiar, right? Uh, years went by, and the construction was endless. And then in 1906, there was a devastating earthquake in California, right? So it, this caused need for repair on the house, regardless of its floating foundation, which ultimately saved it from collapsing altogether. But here's what you'll like. Due to the earthquake damage, the mansion now sits at four stories. So it's right, it's right where you want it to be. That's stupid. That's so, <laughs> dude. This earthquake happened, and like the ceiling of the room she was in, like buckled, and she was trapped in there for like a long ass time. She should have been killed in there because she wasn't. No though. one should build a house that stupid. I just, well, I don't believe it. If you're making the equivalent of twenty six grand a day when you already have like five hundred billion million dollars, like I you guess, can do whatever you want. I guess that's fair. Like you ever think like. Back in the day, like, my grandma used to tell me that my grandma used to go to White Castle when she was younger. Nice. And she's like, I remember, you know, you get, like, a cup of coffee and a slider for a nickel. And to me, that just blew my mind. But back <laughs> in this... Pre- and that included tip. If White Castle was a business at this time, which I'm not entirely sure if it was, let's say that your typical slider ran for five cents. Think of how many sliders she could buy in a given day you got a calculator on that thing i i don't even want to figure it out that is 0.05 times (laughs) twenty six thousand. that's insane (laughs) incomprehensible yeah yeah, it is a lot of sliders you could like you could go to the fucking movie theater for an entire day for a dime a movie you could buy a city yeah you could buy a city for like five bucks. I mean, five I, bucks is all you need. I'm just saying, she. This is talk about the dream job. She, it's not like she was doing anything. Like she I, was just telling them what to do, and they're right. just like, "Well, you're paying us. Let's do it." it like that is, oh, that I'm jealous. I, I'm very jealous. I don't like that. That's why I'm jealous. Dude, she was fucking off, off the fucking hook. It was crazy. All right, let's get into some of the strange details of this house. Uh, under her direction. First of all, all the wood was that was used was redwood. Okay? Uh, this was specifically requested by Sarah, who claimed that she preferred it, though she apparently hated the way it looked. So how do you... Pre- very indecisive, very infuriating, if you ask me. How do you... Pre- how do you prefer something that you don't actually prefer? <laughs> that's, a, that's an anomaly I, in and of itself. You know what? She's gone through a lot. 
She has a lot of it. Just do it. Uh, yeah, you Just know do it. I do give her... I'm being way too hard on this woman. She She's dealt with a lot. I'll give her that. Yeah. So, I guess let her so if let She her wants have this. It. She has the money to back it up. Why not? Uh, because of this, she used faux grain and stain uh, to apply to every exposed piece of wood. Uh, about 20,000 gallons of paint was used on the house to cover up the wood. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, there were roughly 161 rooms by the end of it. Uh, 40 bedrooms, two ballrooms, 47 fireplaces, uh, 17 chimneys, two basement levels, three elevators, over 10,000 panes of glass, 2,000 doors. Insane. Many of which were made, many of like the pane glass things, they were made custom for Sarah by the Pacific American Decorative Company and even Tiffany himself. The I'm, famous Tiffany man. I mean, at a certain point, when does this become just a slap in the face to everyone else in the city? I don't think she's thinking of anyone else. It's like after like the guy the guy that's getting paid to put the doors in. He's like, Oh yeah, alright, I'm here, I'm gonna install your doors. Uh where where would you like these? She's like, I have this one and one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine other doors I need you to put in. It's so like are you that, Is that my job today? i can I leave in the middle of that or I don't think I can get all that done. He's like, I've literally been doing this job for fifty years and this is this is astronomical. I've never had a number this large. You are the day. richest and worst employer I've ever had. <laughs> it's like, how do you... You want to hear a, the biggest fuck you to, like, the crew itself, I would imagine? She queefed is that, on their face. That may have been something that happened. I don't know. But uh, of the 13 bathrooms that were in the entire mansion, there was only one working toilet. Ooh. One in the entire mansion. And it's said that all of the other restrooms in the mansion were uh, made as decoys to confuse spirits, right? Sarah also slept in different rooms each night uh, for the same reason. She was like, i got to confuse these people. Okay, makes sense. These people who were killed by my husband's weapons. Uh, But these weren't the only confusing things about the mansion, right? Rooms were often added to the exterior walls, causing windows to overlook other rooms. Uh, Staircases would ascend several floors and, like, end abruptly. Uh, some of them have mirrors at the top of them. It's kind of kind of spooky. And doors would open to solid walls. It's kind of a fuck you. Uh, hallways would turn corners to dead ends. There were a bunch of secret passageways like uh, all throughout the house so Sarah could move from room to room without being tailed by spirits. She was real weird because she lived there. But the whole reason she was building it was so she wasn't haunted by them. This sounds like some Mary Todd Lincoln shit. <laughs> like some just... <laughs> You're in this position of great influence, and you just lose your fucking mind. It's like you're just hypnotizing yourself with a watch, walking down the fucking hallway to nowhere. Like they're coming to get me. It's like if you, <laughs> you did, built a house for him and invited him. I mean, if you want to get that nitpicky, I mean, I know we're not done yet, but like, okay, so she feels oh, no, responsible there's, there's more. for the deaths of all the people that died, you know, at the hands of the guns. Don't we have to like? compartmentalize that like what about the guy who invented gunpowder no see wouldn't I he be responsible some guy over in china yeah maybe i don't know or how about the guy that makes like the trigger mechanism or you know, the the guy who mines for the material to make the guns it's just, there's so many people that in that in her way of thinking there's so many people that should be haunted it's almost as if the entire world is haunted by ghosts because they made guns you know what the difference between those people and her are grant they're not insane None of those people talked to the Bostonian medium. That's okay. Well, who channeled yeah. their husband and told them something crazy. All right. Yeah. That's, All right. None that's of them fair. had that happen. I did. I. You know. I. My mistake. I forget. <laughs> you can't just nix that. You know. I forget. I. I should ask more if you've been to a psychic and you've exactly. Uh, you know, understood yeah. the other realms side of you. I. I. I didn't take it back. There you go. All right. That's me taking it back. Sarah was obviously an extremely paranormally driven person. Okay. You don't fucking say. Yeah. Though she would say nothing to the workers in the house. Um, of the house uh, being built basically for the purpose of the haunting. Many of the carpenters claim that she would meet with mediums daily, attempting to invoke friendly spirits so as to obtain information on how to appease the not-so-friendly spirits. So she's like, I want the good the good guys to give me advice. And uh, it's speculated that this contributed to these sudden and strange additions and changes to the house that were almost daily being requested of the construction crews. Okay. So Sarah also 
had a room specifically dedicated to attempting to get in touch with the spirits of her husband and daughter. She would allegedly be there every night, every single fucking night from noon, not noon, midnight to 2 a.m. She was just trying to, to, to contact them. That's, All right. you gotta get a This house hobby. was insane, almost as insane as she was. The Disney Haunted Mansion, uh, like, attraction is said to have been, like, directly inspired by this house. Are you telling me that the Eddie Murphy classic Haunted Mansion? <laughs> I don't know about the movie, but... <laughs> Can we, just on a separate note, can we all agree that that is one of those movies that's forgotten about, but it's actually really good? Dude, I was just thinking about that the other day, just a single line where uh, where the guy's like hitting on his wife, and he's like, beautiful children. And he's like, I threw in a few chromosomes here and there too, and he's just smiling. I just thought of that the other day, I don't even know why. I love but, that uh, movie. But it's probably because of this. It's the right amount of fun. It's, it's just good. It, it I is. I just enjoy it. It is. It all works out in the end. Everyone's happy, all the ghosts. Um, yeah, so uh, so constr- construction continued on the house until Sarah Winchester's death in September of 1922. So like 36 years, endless construction on this thing. It's fucking massive. And uh, at the, when she died, it immediately ceased. So uh, she had left all of her possessions, Sarah did, and riches to her niece and personal secretary, Marion. Uh, though a strange detail about this, the mansion was not mentioned once in Sarah's will. So we're not sure if that was implied as her possession, or is that did she want that to just be left alone? Who knows? Anyway, uh, appraisers deemed the house worthless, and uh, much of what was originally in the house was privately auctioned off. Okay, the house was leased to John and Mamie Brown in. Uh, uh, about five months after Sarah Winchester's death, uh, for 135000 for 10 years, they eventually bought it, right? And they're doing tours. It's open to the public just five months after. Interesting. So let's get into the haunted it's aspects It's a cash grab. It's all it is. It's a fucking cash grab. You're damn right it is, and it's working. You, they can't even... I guarantee even at this point, they haven't made as much money as she fucking had. No. Never. You never. Can't. You can't catch up with Sarah Winchester. But uh, accounts of the house being haunted. Naturally, after Sarah's death, many, many people uh, were interested in not only the house itself, but the haunting story behind its construction, because she didn't really tell anyone anything. She didn't have any diaries. She didn't tell anyone about this. She was just like, "Ah, I'm building a house. A lot of rumors. Uh, So aside from the regular tours one can take of the home, many paranormal investigators and mediums have gone into the house in search of paranormal activity. All right. Many claim to have seen apparitions in the house on multiple occasions, but one apparition appears more than the others, a ghost that most know by the name of Clyde. Oh. Clyde. He is a thickly mustached man sporting the normal dress of the beginning of the 20th century, and he is almost always sighted pushing a wheelbarrow through the basement. Wow. He's working there. I guess. What a shitty afterlife. Right? He's just pushing a wheelbarrow. There there are actually like photos hung in the mansion that people have like noticed to to include Clyde. They're just like, that's the guy. Like that's hey, fucking him. That's that invisible spirit that that's I that saw. Spectre I saw. It it leads them a lot a lot of people to believe he was either part of the crew in the long winded fucking construction or just that she knew him personally in one way or another. Clyde's there, he's pushing wheelbarrows spectrally. Or it's some Scooby-Doo level shit, because I'm not buying lot, it. Dude, uh, just watching, like, footage of, like, tours through this house and, like, just things on it, it's it screams fucking Scooby-Doo. All, everything just looks very Scooby-Doo-y. Yeah, just, like, massive, a massive house with an extreme layout. Ghosts Hidden all Hidden doors, confusing doors, everything. Windows, pictures, it's... It's got all the makings of a good mystery machine hangout. The gang sh- is sh- sure to uh, to show up. But yeah, so uh, so some investigators have captured unexplained audio and video that sounds and appear to be uh, a young woman speaking in concise spurts, as well as movement of doors and furniture. Isn't that creepy? 
It's, yeah. It I is creepy. I wouldn't enjoy it. So investigators have also experienced strange occurrences uh, regarding their equipment while attempting to investigate the house, including, but not limited to, batteries draining on, like, cameras and phones. Cameras capturing orbs... Uh, and then being unable to focus, uh, unable to uh, become focused on anything at a distance beyond like roughly a foot. So they see orbs, they're just like, no way. Uh, K2 or EMF meters, which are like known as spirit boxes, they're electromagnetic field detectors, right? Uh, spiking, when investigators address spirits directly. And even having cameras that they set up to record overnight completely spin around to face walls. Walls, you say. Walls. Walls, you Walls. say. Um, yeah. So there, there are even like rooms in the house that even the tour guides that are currently employed there uh, have a great aversion to, right? One of them being the secret attic that was discovered as recently as 2016. They just found this fucking room. That's, that's just That's stupid. how crazy this house is. How is there not one curious employee... You know, that goes off the beaten path. And just, uh, I guess it fuck. just it took that long, to 2016. Uh, the room was discovered containing a pipe organ, a sewing table, and a dress mannequin. Kind of creepy. Uh, the staircase leading up to this room is a labyrinth in and of itself. The walls and ceiling narrow as one approaches the entrance. It's crazy. Uh, this is just one of the many areas of the house believed to be extremely haunted, even areas outdoors uh, on the property have had paranormal phenomenon occur. Multiple fucking tourists and visitors and stuff, they you know take photos, you go visit this place, because it's a tourist attraction now. Yeah, man. It's still open. You can still go in there. But people are taking you know photos on the front of the property, like, hey, we're on vacation. And apparently, uh, a lot of them have captured a hazy gray figure in the photo with them that was not visible at the time that it was taken, right? Creepy. Interest. Sounds like a ghost in the photo. Yeah. Uh, visitors as well as tour guides have also reported hearing their own names whispered in their ears as they roam the grounds. Okay. You know what? And so even now, almost 100 years later, after the death of Sarah Winchester, she's still immortalized. We're talking about her. I'm talking about her. You're hearing it. Yeah. Right? Uh, by this potentially haunted house and the tragic and unique story behind its construction. Boom. And chances are... Winchester you, Mystery House. If you're listening to this show, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you've seen the film Shaun of the Dead, and the name Winchester just makes sense because they the say Winchester. it probably 500 times in that movie. Yep, because there's a Winchester rifle. And yeah. then those zombies who died due to it are now in that house. I Roaming around, trying to use the bathroom, can't find the one that works. I have to be completely honest in my analysis here. Uh, I'm I'm going out on a limb here. It all sounds like bullshit to me. None of this... You sound like bullshit to everyone, Grant. This sounds like an absolute ass-backwards throat-ramming of a ghost story, and I'm not a fan. It's a crazy old woman. Yeah. And she's just like... My husband is responsible for a lot of deaths. And you know what? I, I guess I see where she's coming from. That's a valid thought. It's true. But then she builds this house, and it's just it's haunted by the people that are killed by guns. That makes no Winchester sense Winchester specifically. That makes zero sense to me because, first off, anybody... Anybody that knows anything about a ghost, if they're real, it tends it tends to be relative to location, you know? Um, we can pretty much look at any example, and it goes back to somewhere in geography. That's what it all comes down to. It's like, this person was here. So why do they all go into this house? They've never been to this house. They don't know these people. Who are you to think ghosts fit into tropes? So I have a further Fuck question. Fuck you. I have a further question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her same line of thinking. Wouldn't what about every barn in America? Because think of all the people that have died from either overeating or choking on beef and just suffered horrible deaths. How come barns aren't haunted by the people that the beef killed? Put up in a flyer. Put up a flyer in the spirit realm. 
come on over to this house, Winchester rifle, dead people were partying. It, it's the beef house. I don't like it. Mitch, what's your what's your beef here? Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Well, my thought is, so essentially it's like the idea of like the collective unconscious. So if you essentially, essentially you could, you could speculate and say that she willed the house into being haunted just because of her thinking that and her saying that and believing that it actually happened. And she put a lot of energy into that. Yeah. I so mean, it, it's, it could be possible. It if, could be. If you're going to look at, you know, that theory I don't is like valid. It. I don't like it. There's something off about this woman. I don't believe her. Well, yeah, she built a fucking crazy house for dead people. I don't I don't buy her sick, twisted, perverted story about You know what you could tell any story quickly and make it sound stupid, so fuck you. I think it's a haunted house. She wants she she's begging for it. She's begging to be haunted. And I don't like it. Yeah, but No. No <laughs> But hold on, hold hold on a sec. So she didn't tell anyone that it's like, okay, these are this house is gonna have a bunch of spirits in it. You know, she didn't, like, publicize it. She wasn't making money off of it. She just did this crazy thing because she was a crazy person. Yeah. So I don't I don't see why it's just, like, a cash grab. No, I didn't mean, like, for her. I meant the people post her. Because they bought it and they were like, oh, it's, a, it's a haunted house, so come check it out. It's like, so are you going to live there or, like, do anything with it or are you just going to offer tours? Tours, tours nonstop. Uh, you have to pay forty dollars to get into this house that I own, so that you might be able to see a. Go- if you gotta pay, are to you go like, on a ghost hunt? It's not a good ghost hunt. It seems like it's it. It follows the the pa- the career path of Green Day. You're just like, oh, they sold out. They're doing tours now. Like, what are you upset about that too? Like, they they've made it. They're making money. The the history's preserved. We're talking about. I knew I knew all that shit about it that I, I just have- said. I have a comment that I think will upset the both of you. What's that? I could give two shits about Green Day. No, I don't really mind either, but... <laughs> All right, good. Uh, you're more upset, Griff. Yeah. He, he's not going to make any more fucking uh, intros for us if you keep saying that. I'm sorry, Griff. I, I love you, but you know what? Green Day... It's It was merely a means to an end conversationally. Green Day is silly. And <laughs> that's a good. That's good. And I hope that right? they get haunted by the demons. I'm sure they're haunted the by something. Pills, pills, and meth. You think they're into meth? All back in the day. Oh yeah. Really? Okay. I could see that. Maybe they were living in fucking squats in Oakland. I, Are you shitting me? See, but now we're just stereotyping. You know, just because you're living in a squat, maybe you're doing you know crack. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I. I almost guarantee they've done meth. I wouldn't put it past them, I'll tell you there that. There you go. I, uh, yeah, whatever. But, uh, you know, I well, mean. Well, I'm sorry you hate the Winchester house, Grant. Well, see, that's I the thing. I liked it. I don't hate it at all. I I enjoy the the weirdness of it. The uh, lore. Especially the, the lady who made it. I just really appreciate how fucking nuts she is. Dude, she, like, the staircases were also, like, super shallow steps because she had crazy arthritis and she was like four foot nine like so she could only lift her foot like fucking two inches so almost all the stairs are just like that they're just it's just a ramp they're just like coiling around to go up it's a it's a ramp with nubules you know yeah at that point why didn't they just create the elevator or they're like they had three elevators (laughs) they're like we don't need fucking stairs i can't use them anyway it's a waste of my time (laughs) They had three fucking elevators I, uh, Back then, they had push light. They had push activated like gas lamps and shit, and like inside heating and heated fucking water. That see, this that place is, was crazy for the back in the day. That's what you not get, just architecturally, but you make twenty six. If you're making the equivalent of twenty six thousand dollars a day, I mean that is, I can't. I I really can't comprehend that number. Because she had it's, four cars back when that was a new thing. Yeah, when they still call them like power horses, you know. <laughs> My I'm on the electric horse. horse. I'm on the metal one. How many horsepower? 
One. Three. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Just put an extra wheel on it. Don't even raise her for pinks. She's going to kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand behind my car. It's dangerous. Right, you think, like, okay, you know how, like, I guess in a contemporary example, like when vaping kind of came became bigger, there was the people that were on both sides where they're like, it's healthier for you. And then there's the people that are like, "We, it's too new. We don't know what it is. Do you think there are people like that with cars? Oh, for sure. They're just like, we're neglecting horses. Like they absolutely. My just, horse is going to get fat. They it's couldn't like, understand I... the jump. They're like, why would you take something so simple as riding a horse and make it this complicated and turn it into this thing you call a car. They just, like they just absolutely up until like the forties. They just refused. They're just like no, no. Fuck your car. I go. I have tradition. to change a tire every five miles. Is bullshit. They're like the they're like the hipsters. You know, they're the hipsters yeah. back in the day. Yeah. It's just they're like, like everything works the way it is. It's like no, time time keeps slipping. It's kind of like how nowadays. In the future. You go to, like, certain places, and, like, I understand the criticism of it. I'm I'm very aware of that, but uh, typically, music fans, specifically, they'll be like, oh, did you hear this album? And they're like, yeah, I really like it. They're like, well, did you listen to it on vinyl? I'm like, no, I didn't. They're like, well, you didn't really listen to it then, did you? And it's like, Dude, you know what? It's like, you just wanted to attack me just now. That's why you're talking to me. It's like, God forbid that I choose the easiest medium to fit my life. I pay a subscription for Spotify so I could just listen to stuff. I'm not going <laughs> like, to... I can like, Why do I have to do that? I can pull this machine out of my pocket and have anything I want, but I know nothing about music because I don't have... You need to go have, out and purchase a $45 piece of, a, of fucking vinyl. I don't have an eight-pound box that spins a circle and plays sound. Have you ever, you ever like, uh, gone somewhere and, and, like, to a party or something? Someone shows up with a record player? Neither have I, but could you imagine? I like that. I hate it. I feel like it, that what you just said goes against your own point. <laughs> you texting during the podcast? Get your mind to the game. I'm, I am. I'm answering. <laughs> answering? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm answering back. Uh, we're oh, just- Yes. I'm currently engaged in a conversation about a chameleon. A chameleon? Yeah. We'll fucking blend that shit into the background for the podcast. How about that? I like that. Oh, That's right. good. That was a good call. All right. I would have to... My final offering on the Winchester house is this. It might be haunted. I'll grant it that. I cannot right. deny good. that it might not be. <laughs> grant. However... It see it just seems too good to be true, you know. It seems too poetic. However, maybe that's why it is haunted. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I uh poetically ghostly. But yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if it's just me being stuck on this thought. But that's a little selfish, I think, to uh, for her to be like, I'm responsible for all of these deaths. It's like, well, there's there's a lot of moving parts that go into these things. I feel you like, know? Uh, yeah. No, you are right, but I don't feel like she did it because she felt guilty. I feel like she was like because what her well, cha- her channeled husband what <laughs> what he said was like, "All right, if if you don't want to be haunted the rest of your life, physically or metaphorically, I guess." So, in the physical sense, I could see for, I feel for like your that point made her more paranoid. Because after probably that, it it's was just like, like this is giving like a face to my fears. <laughs> like, my dead like, there husband. There's a thing that's gonna attack me. Can you imagine hearing that? My dead husband told me that I need to do this. It's like, wow, that's that's a statement <laughs> right how there. Much, how much do you think that uh, medium session was, in Boston? Uh, standard rate for back then. I'm gonna. I would. It would shock me if a like a medium was able to charge more than three cents. But like, who would pay for that? You know, like who <laughs> no, could it's, afford it's it? True, it's true. Nowadays, I guess. But uh, also, that's like when uh, I think when was that? A couple. It was a couple of years ago. Uh, Georgie, Mitch, and myself. We went to the psychic. Um, yeah, the uh, one out by the mall. Yeah, and they advertised. Uh, it was like if you get a group reading. I think it was like twenty bucks uh, a person, 
So we were going to go, and we were like, cool, you know, we'll check it out, see what it is. And, you know, the old, uh, I, she looked like a gypsy, so I don't know. She looked like a is gypsy. Is that a problematic word? I don't even know. Yeah, I, I mean, just, you have the image in your head now. And she had the balls to look at us and be like, that's only for children. Yours are $45 each. And we were just like, <laughs> fuck, fuck you, this. lady. False advertisement. You got to put that in the fine print. It's like you really should have put that on the sign. You know, if you're a psychic, you'd know that we would have came in and asked. Yeah. And we would have had to be turned away. You could have saved yourself that entire conversation. Yeah. But, I mean, if she's charging 45 translate that back to back then. I'd even, I, every, for some reason, everything in that time is a nickel. Everything's everything. a nickel. You got a bag full of nickels, you're going to have a good night. Except, like, the newspaper and candy. Those are just a penny, you penny, know? Penny, yeah. Penny candies. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, I, I do wonder if... I'm a, I'm guessing that by this point there has to be some type of ghostly energy there. Because if you subscribe to the ghost lifestyle... Yeah. Like, like you know, Mitch, Mitch said, and we were talking about, it's like, you... Once you put the energy into it, it makes it a little bit more real. I think she may have been like a self-fulfilling prophecy because she died in her sleep in the house. And <laughs> it's not funny, next, but I'm laughing. It's not funny, but, but, but next year it'll be 100 years since her death. Oh, my God. Isn't that crazy? God. And it will be a <laughs> oh full moon. Oh, my God. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I like it. It I is, also like it's it. very unique cuz I mean I think we've talked about this before how ghost stories a lot of them tend to follow a similar pattern of spookiness and history abound I guess That's what I was saying about tropes earlier and you ignored it I mean I mostly I didn't want to hear it Yeah I'm, Yeah I'll yeah. admit I'm ex- That's what I do. I'm extremely stubborn there's no way that I'm not Oh my There's a bag of dry ice next to my head now. That was crazy. What a... <laughs> Why is that in the house? <laughs> what a wild thing to see. <laughs> I No, I'm just leaving this going. I'm not cutting this. This oh, is perfect. God. I don't... That was awesome. I don't know how to describe... Yeah, what happened... That was uh, the perfect... There was just a bag of wow. dry ice immediately next to Jake's head. And I didn't know what to do. Uh... Wow. It looked really it looked ghostly, maybe. It kind of fit the scheme. Very gaseous, Do you bubbling. think any of the employees could just be walking around with bags of dry ice scaring this poor old woman? <laughs> <laughs> is that a possibility? <laughs> or is that somehow more far-fetched? I mean, yeah, people have always been cruel, right? I don't know if people... I, I actually would like to know that. You know, I know the idea of Practical jokes and pranking has been around arguably since forever. Yeah. But how far did they really take it back then? Like, was it more subtle? You know, like, she thought it was going to be two teaspoons of sugar. But But it it was was eight. It was (laughs) (laughs) 1.3. And, like... like, So humor back then was just British humor now? I guess. Or what we... Honest what humor. the stereotype of their humor is, just dryness. I mean, you see nowadays, like, you go on YouTube, they're like, the new prank video, and it's a guy in, like, a $700 clown outfit in an underground tunnel in New York at, like, 3 a.m. He's like, we're going to prank him good. Like, <laughs> it's like, no, these people think you're they're going to die. Do you? Th- I mean, you know there's always people that did things like that, but I want to know how many how many stories do we know nowadays that if we really were to go back in time and witness it firsthand, we're just that was a really good prank. You're like, <laughs> you know, and you like fist bump him. Yeah, I wonder it. It opens the door to a lot of different questions. It really does. What was choking around like back then? I uh, I was doing a lot of ghostly research this week. I oh, do, yeah. I tend I go in like waves of interest, you know, and ghosts have always been one of the top interests. Have we ever discussed on the show? Of whether or not we actually believe in ghosts, like each of us individually. I don't think we have. I Should do. we do it? We can take that opportunity. I don't care. I'm Jake. Yes, I think. Yes. I, I th- think they well, exist. Oh, okay. I thought you meant it. You're like, yes, I think. 
I was like, well, you got to elaborate on that. Like, what do you think? No, yeah, what? dude, I, I think they exist. In what in what way? Like, I'm talking, is this some type of mental energy? Is it a physical entity? Is it the spirit of a dead person? What like where where are you coming from? Here? I don't know. I don't know if it's so much like spirit as much as it might be just like an echo of the energy that they used to have. You know what I mean? Because there have been like those those um, those stories of like uh, fucking ghost poops, ghost poops too. Yeah, Do but ghost poop. I would hope so, because that's one of the little pleasures. You know, it is. It's one Elvis's of the, ghost does, Mitch says. That's one of those things. That often, we'll get back to that in one second. If pooping was somehow illegal, I feel that life would be a lot worse for everyone involved. We'd all be incarcerated. I mean, if if somehow, some way, a genie were to be like, you don't need, your body physically does not need to poop anymore. It all, it's just all pee. It's it's just all gonna come out as pee. It just comes out in like a long strand. No, it's it's liquid. It all gets liquid. It's all liquid. There's no. Uh, it's not like gristly. No, I'd be very displeased because there is something calming about a nice dump. No, very much. You so. get to you know relax. Yeah, I would hate to think that ghosts, should they exist, don't get that. Get, okay. Get the relief, you know. I respect but, that. But the uh, the one story I was thinking of, I think I heard it on like uh, uh, Astonishing Legends or something, of that guy that guy who was away at war. And like every before he left, every day he would like run up the stairs, and like go in his room. And his mom like lived there, so she was like, "Yeah, I knew that." But uh, there was a story of like he went away to war, oh, and he yeah. died in that crash in like a helicopter crash or something like that. And at the exact same time as it actually happened, his mom like heard an enormous crash outside in the street. And then heard a bunch of thuds going up the stairs and like thud, a door thud, 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 thud. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. Is that is that his him coming home? What is that? Might might be him going home after the death. Maybe it's just an echo of his energy, something that like is, that. that is quite I don't know intriguing. exactly what it is. And I don't think anyone does. But yeah, I do think there question. is something to ghosts. So ghosts, as no one understands them, I think they exist. All right. What about you? Oh, Mitch, you gotta go first. We go in order here. I I would freak out if we didn't go. I uh, I definitely agree with Jake. Well, that's it, just wrong. <laughs> I can't believe you'd say that, Mitch. That's just offensive to me. Yeah, like yeah, no one no one knows what it is exactly, and I I definitely think it could be a combination of things. But yeah, I'm I agree with you, Jake. Yes. All right. I I would have to say this. I'm Fuck not you, Grant. I, I'm I am a firm believer in ghosts. I always have been. As I've gotten older, I've I've slowly read more and learned more and tried to tried to teach myself the ways of this mysterious beast that haunts our dreams. The beast. Um, I don't know. I I do believe that ghosts are real. Yes. I. So we're in agreement. I think it's a very personal thing i mean if you personally do not believe in ghosts the chances of you seeing a ghost are slim to none if existent at all uh if you're a firm firm believer i think you're a little bit more susceptible to these things you might pick things up that perhaps aren't ghosts but are weird little mind tricks perhaps or even just weird tricks in general yeah and then if you are an avid believer, like I'm talking avid believer, like you are praying to ghosts and leaving dishes of <laughs> ghost plasma water for them to come and drink, you're probably going <laughs> to see a ghost. It sounds like so many religions. It's... You are probably going to make yourself see a ghost just because it's what you believe. It's how you live your life. It's what you choose to do. So are you saying that you believe in ghosts in that your belief in them makes them real? They're like tulpas? Or something like, yeah. Know what you mean? Y- yes and no, because is it like a belief thing? Like Santa's sleigh can only fly if you believe in him, you know, like an elf. In a way, Tinkerbell maybe. Now this could, like the first thing I said kind of it kind of negates everything I said after it <laughs> because <laughs> ghosts are they're very they're a very personal experience. I mean. 
any scientific mind in the world would probably argue that ghosts don't exist. But how do you take an experience away from somebody that you haven't experienced? Yeah. How can you objectively look at someone and say, you're wrong, what you experienced was wrong? So, in a way, there's there's no way to say they aren't because if people believe it, you can't, then, it's, then it is real. That's just what yeah. it is. You can't base science off of whether ghosts are real or not because they're, they're good thing we essentially didn't do that. yeah <laughs> it's just like fuck well essentially science is you know a way to you know measure things within the physical universe and how are you supposed to measure something that's not physical you know something ethereal or you know something along yeah. those lines and i i mean i definitely think that there can be particular energies that are stronger than others uh yeah that's that's the whole reason spirit boxes exist is to measure like electromagnetic things yeah. uh and fields I, that's what it is i mean EMF. i think a lot of that would explain more of your con not contemporary that's not the right word more of your conventional hauntings. yeah yeah where you know you go into a house or just like this mansion you go in and you see Clyde. that would be arguably the strongest energy in that house. Yeah. Because everybody's witnessing the same end product. So, I don't know. I don't... I tend to stray away from the personal soul of a dead person belief. I I go more towards... I go more towards brain blasts. You know, Jimmy Neutron style. Brain got a blast. Like, it just... Like, just, like, residual energy from their life. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Nice. I think it can definitely exist. Um, and I think the more people that witness it or get involved in it or remember it, I guess would be the best way to put it, they then put their energy into that inadvertently and make it larger or keep it the same. Yeah. And that's how it's allowed to live on forever. And that's why like modern ghost hunting is so crazy because we have things like all the, all these like meters and fucking cameras and like microphones and things where we can capture all these things and actually isolate them. Like, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you know it it is weird. It's like, do you see this? And they circle something in the corner. It's like there's nothing there. But then they change it all up and they're just like, oh, it kind of looks like a butterfly. I don't know, like an orb, something like that. But also like like those those tricks with like audio where it's like you just hear a noise. And then it comes up with like a word, and then that word is all you can hear in the noise, yeah. like that kind of thing. It's all very strange. There's no, there's no one way to do it. And but like the, the very, modern ghost hunting is crazy. It's very, it's different for everybody involved. Anyone that has an experience, if anybody listening to this show has had an experience, I promise you, it's probably in one way or another different than another person's Definitely. experience. Definitely. And. Email us at startacult at gmail dot com because we want to hear some of these fucking stories. Please do. That would I, be awesome. I have. One, we do an episode of just reading people's like accounts. That'd be so sick. I have one. It it's slightly unrelated. We we very quickly glossed over this in a, a previous episode, but I it's not. I don't know if it's necessarily ghosts, but I think it aligns with similar energies, if you will, and. The I mean everybody we all know this story we heard it uh it's very intriguing my my girlfriend has had an experience with doppelgangers you remember this yeah and I Mitch Mitch can back me up on this it was very natural when the conversation occurred and she was completely unaware that this was well I mean she knew it was weird that it happened to her but well, she didn't know about doppelgangers or anything right like she wasn't like the the concept of them she's not your typical fan of these types of things like when I say these things it's usually an eye roll which just know? goes to show how much of a ladies man grant is it just it's an because eye roll because this podcast is a huge part this is my personality. <laughs> <laughs> this is who you are 100% of the time. <laughs> this is what I am. This we just give you a list of words you can't say, and we're just like, all right, hit record. When the camera's off, I just this is still me. But it it was it's very short and sweet, but it was... Um, she was downstairs uh, doing laundry, and when she turned uh, to go back up the stairs, she started walking, and she, like, glanced back down. And as she glanced, it was 
her, her mother, her grandmother, and a child that at least she could not recognize. It wasn't a family member or like a friend or she she didn't know who that was. And that child was me. That would be crazy. That would be cr- just a baby with my head. <laughs> just, just you know, like in George <laughs> like, Lopez. Yeah, and George Lopez when he's a kid and it's just his <laughs> face over a kid's body. Oh uh, shit! Oh so, no! But, uh, so she saw George Lopez, me, and her family. So she turns and they're all there, and I, I, I just remember being very creeped out when hearing the story. Just based on the reaction, she's like, I didn't know, like, what what was going on. Like, I didn't really think anything of it. But the fact that she was seeing herself is crazy to me. And this, and then, well, then the story ends. She, like, turns to go back up the stairs, and they are at the top of the stairs. And she kind of just freaked out. Like, all in a line staring at her? Yeah, like, they are just looking are at her. Are those the doppelgangers? Or they- no, they were doppelgangers of... Yeah, people like downstairs. Oh my god! They were downstairs. Then when she turned to look upstairs, they were upstairs. Jesus fuck! And I, I mean, I yeah, obviously I have some bias because that's my girlfriend. But I would have to my say my girlfriend that, has also had some crazy shit. See exactly. Yeah, like, it's these things. That Orbs. They're very. It happens to every person, regardless of belief or interest or anything. Most people have some type of weird experience they can't explain. Yeah, dude. Fucking, uh, my lady had, like, uh, some orb experience with, like, one of her cousins. She, like, her cousin could apparently vouch for this. In the woods, there's just, like, fucking two orbs weaving between trees coming at them, and then they just disappear. I don't like shit and then in the woods. They were yellow, I believe, or white. I, I, need, sh- I need to get some more details on this, but... Shit in the woods is fucked dude, up. Dude, the other day, like, last week, like, two weeks ago, maybe... She was, like, sitting in her room, and her closet door was open. She saw a little, like, beam of circular light mm-hmm. come come um, out and, like, stop in the middle of her that. floor. And then it went underneath her chair, and she, like, turned down to look. It wasn't there anymore. And she's just sitting there pressing flowers because she's awesome. But, like, what is these these orbs? What's going on? Hmm. They're following her. Yeah, I don't like that. Dude, when she also hears footsteps woods. on her fucking her, her, her stairs. It's crazy. Her fucking knob is jingling. I can't believe I haven't told you any of this. No, that's... This is new. It, 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 see, these are very prime... It's funny because I don't personally have a parent... I mean, I have... Me either. <laughs> I have situations that I've been in that could maybe questionably be something paranormal. Well, you had that whole Ouija thing going on. Right, but it was never... It was never to the point where I actually questioned myself like was that par- it was more like I don't know what the fuck that was and I just tend to not think about it so I don't really focus on it but the fact that I know people in my life and I'm sure everybody knows someone in their life that has had these experiences you can't really deny that they're not real you know you could try but you can't deny that they are real yeah they have yeah. to be real in some capacity there you go How it, it's, it's, it's implausible to me to look, it's the same with UFOs and aliens. Yeah. At a certain point, when you cross a threshold of a million people telling you that they've experienced something, is it? How is it possible that not one of them is telling the truth, or at least what they perceive to be as the truth? Yeah. You have to understand that. Fake statistic, but I'd say one in every three people have a story. Yeah. You know, I think that's one in every three fair. or four. Fake statistic again, but that—that's how prevalent it is i feel i i honestly i'd have to tell you that i i'd back that number up i would defend nice. that i don't even know if that's true but I'd start back a petition to not do a statistic and just have it published mm-hmm. yeah but so with all that being said email us your ghostly encounters either start a supernatural, cult perhaps at it was just a weird guy at the grocery store i still want to hear about it you know dude I still Do you remember that it. story, the smiling man? How he was—he just, just smiled, and it was like the, oh, the feeling of like the yeah. most intense terror someone could have. Just like yeah, oh that grinning God. man, the oh. grinning man, just in a diner. Mm-hmm. Ooh. The devil in the diner. I that's, believe that's a creepy pasta. No, that wasn't a creepy pasta. Well, it's think. a good premise for one. That was, but it's real. That was a real story from someone. Yeah, that was. I believe that was astonishing legends. The first time I heard that. 
Astonishing Legends is so tight. They they get like the real nitty gritty ghost the shit that is impossible to know. Because I mean, it, it, they're the stories. Because they that, talk about it for hours. They're the stories that don't have the information. Like you, the only way to get the story is to contact the family. You know, and, and they do that. That's what so, they do. Yeah. I I think that's interesting, and I mean, if we if there were more local stories around us, I would I'd actually like to do that. But it's kind of. I don't know, we're not really a ghost area. Oh, no, yeah, we have, like, haunted locations. We talked about them, like, the Northwest Hauntings. So we got Reader Road and, like, an abandoned fucking hospital or some shit. But Yeah, we don't really... Outside of that, it's not really, uh, not really poignant it's part nothing of our beyond society. It's spooky, you know? It's yeah. just kind of there. But... We are no Bridgewater, Mitch. I, um... I don't know, I'd like to hear other people's stories, because, I mean... We know we have fans, okay? I know you're out there. I know you're out there. Well, how do you know, Grant? Maybe I have hundreds of phones at my house, and I just download. That would actually day. be like the nicest thing anyone's ever done. <laughs> I'm just, uh, <laughs> just gaslighting you you're into like, thinking actually, that we have like success. <laughs> Jake, you're like, I actually don't have a job. My job is staying home. <laughs> Your parents and, pay me to do this, <laughs> and they're just doing it to make sure that everything looks good. But, but no, we know you're out there. All right, we know you're fucking out there. Absolutely. And odds are. Some of you have stories, so come on and send them in. Even if you're not a writer, we'll get the gist. And Just email us some accounts, you know. If you guys can't tell by this point, we love getting emails. We, we do. love it. It's like... It literally it's, makes it's our day. It's so good. We to- we've been- I've been talking about it for days. Every time we get an email, we text each other like, can you believe this? It's Can you believe this? It's a beautiful thing. We have some great people out there. Nice little serotonin release. That's what it sounds like in my ears. We oh. get an email and it goes, oh. oh. So, yeah. Yeah. So, email us, startacult at gmail.com. Yeah, please do that. Do I'd, it. I'd appreciate that very, very much. But with that being said, that, that the is end? the episode. That is the end of the episode. So, maybe you follow us on all the shit. Yes. All right. Maybe Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Also, there's a Patreon link below. We've been saying the email. I'll say it one more time. Start a cult at gmail.com. Darn. Send us some stuff. Totin. Just say, tell, tell us if you believe in ghosts. Just yeah. at all. Like, even if you don't have a story, just like, no. Or yes. We'll, we'll understand because I'll remember me uh, yeah. asking this. Yeah, no, I, I see. I like every, I like both sides of every story. You know, I'm interested. It's true. In that, so it's working out for me. Both sides, you can just presume somewhere in the middle, and then, well, then we all just live happily. I love you all. We will be back next week as usual. Yeah, it's what we do uh, now. It's Grant. I'm Jake. We are starting a cult. Mitch was here. Uh, Mitch, what do you have to add to this, Mitch? I love being verbal.